Good morning and welcome to our first ever virtual spring seminar. My name is Doug Heindel and I will be your host for today's event. A uh, quick intro about myself. I am the sales, business development and marketing manager here at Mill Creek Gardens. I've been a part of this team since February 2018. So just, just had my three year anniversary. Pretty stoked about that. Uh, many of you may recognize me from visiting your local garden centers or talking to you on the phone or spying to emails. And one of my favorite parts of the job, helping with customer pickups here in the spring. So if you come pick up plants here in the spring, you'll get to see my smiling face behind a face mask, of course. Um, for those of you that are new to Mill Creek, we were founded in 1978 by George and Linda Peeler. Um, we've been growing finished retail ready plant material on a wholesale basis for 43 years now. Um, our customer base includes independent garden centers, landscape professionals, farm markets, municipalities. Um, a good majority of those customers are located within a 250 mile radius of our growing operations here in central Ohio. Um, but we are starting to branch out of that. Quick uh, note about the format today. Soon I'll pass the screen over to Fred Higginbotham, our growing operations manager, and he will be presenting two topics. First will be on new for spring 2020 and beyond. So that'll be new varieties for this season. Um, and then there'll be another topic about planning for summer and what plans we got have, what plans we have going. Um, in between those talks, we'll be doing some interactive polling questions, keep everybody engaged and get a little bit of feedback. And then at the end, we'll do a question and answer session and be sure to stick around for the announcement of one of our Mill Creek Yetis. So looking forward to that. All right, so Fred Higginbotham, growing operations extraordinaire. Um, he has a bachelor's degree from the Ohio State University in crop science. Um, he's been a team member here at Mill Creek for 15 years now. Uh, one of the things you're going to learn about Fred, if you don't already know, is he's super passionate about plants and it kind of oozes out of his pores. So <laughs> hopefully it'll be uh, pretty obvious. As you can see from his little bio there, his favorite list of plants, there's not one. It's like his kids, he always says. He just can't pick one. He's got that's so me. many uh, favorite <laughs> plants. So super passionate about plants. Um, with that, we're going to launch our first poll question of the day. If I can do this properly, what are you most excited about for 2021? So feel free to jump in there. We'll give you like 30 seconds. Fred, what are you most excited about? Uh, well, I'm always pretty pumped up uh, about the perennials, but you know we've got some exciting stuff happening with our herb line uh, this year. And then the same with annuals. Uh, our annual line continues to grow season after season, more hanging baskets this year. So if, if, if there were a select all button though, I, I would probably hit select all. Big shocker there. All right, let's, uh, let's end the poll and go to the results. Perennials, Ooh. Uh, pretty good portion of you were interested in perennials. So that's exciting. I would have picked herbs, that's me, that's all right. You know. So thank you for participating in that. Now we're going to pass it over to Fred. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, like Doug said, welcome uh, to Mill Creek. Um, you know, we're excited to be meeting here with everybody today. We prefer to do it in person, but we're glad we can share some knowledge here today as spring approaches. I know probably everybody's getting excited. I know I am. I think Doug shared with me today. We've got 30 more days. Uh, I'm pretty jacked up for spring. Can't wait for it to start. So uh, we'll just kind of jump right in here. Okay, first plant we're going to talk about um, that's new for our 2021 crop is Allium medusa. Uh, we've added a couple of alliums over the years here at Mill Creek. Probably the most popular one that we do is uh, the Millennium. Uh, this one's a little bit different. It's kind of got that same blue-green foliage color. It gets a little bit taller than Millennium. Uh, but as you can see, the name Medusa here, and we've got the mystical Greek figure down here. Uh, the seed heads, or excuse me, the buds, as these things are kind of popping out in spring. I mean, it very much looks like this, 
the snakes, you know, on the head of Medusa here. So very unique, very different. Um, you know, I've been really pumping up Allium the last couple of years, you know, really great garden performer. And so far we're seeing the same success uh, with Medusa here at Milk Creek. All right, uh, Echinacea sombrero. I'm sure everybody's very familiar with the sombrero series. Uh, we grow uh, quite a few of them. You know, uh, you know some of the more popular ones we do are salsa red. You know, a new one that we've added the last couple of years is the trace amigos. Those guys get to about 18 to 20 inches tall, so still pretty kind, you know, compact. Um, but we picked up this new one here called poco yellow. Uh, this one uh, stays even shorter and more stockier. Still got that same same, you know, well branching habit like the sombreros have. Uh, so as the plant material, you know, new genetics come out year after year, it seems like there's been a, a big focus on short and stocky. Um, and this kind of just falls right in line with this. So beautiful yellow color. Um, you know, echinacea are great for attracting pollinators. Uh, great summer, you know, great color throughout the, uh, the summer weeks. Uh, so we're excited to see and introduce this uh, Apoco yellow uh, to the lineup. Okay, uh, Limelight Lady Fern. So this is a new introduction just kind of based on the fact that we had our typical lady fern that we do uh, get canceled. You know, every year, you know, suppliers have issues with plant material. So we try our best to try to keep our lineup pretty consistent, especially with the varieties that we know perform well, like the lady fern. Uh, but for whatever reason, we just weren't able to get plant material. So we added this limelight lady fern, kind of similar growth habit as the lady fern. Uh, this one here has kind of got a really nice chartreuse colored uh, foliage. Um, again, if you've heard me talk before, um, I'm a big fan of, you know, kind of unique stems. So whether it's like a chippy bark or in this case, kind of a, a cranberry colored stem on these, um, it's got really unique, kind of like the lady fern uh, as, as well. Uh, but that chartreuse color on here of the, the kind of the fresh, clean foliage coming out against that raspberry stem is uh, very eye popping. And uh, we're, again, excited to introduce it to our lineup. Okay, uh, Helianthus Lemon Queen. Um, so this is kind of new, I would say. We grew this about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, you know, again, as I just mentioned earlier, a lot of the, the focus on a lot of the new breeding is short and stocky. Well, this guy is the complete opposite. This plant has been around for a while. Um, you know, like I said, the Helianthus Lemon Queen gives you phenomenal, you know, summer color. This thing will bloom all summer long into the fall months. And you read that right down there, can get to six to eight feet tall. Um, you know, I had one of these at my old house and this thing was every bit of six to eight feet tall. A uh, little tip, uh, one thing that I picked up from Deb Kanapke years ago, um, you know, some of these plants that tend to get really tall and maybe, you know, flop around a little bit. Um, she had suggested, uh, you know, as some of these plants are, you know, breaking dormancy, coming out of winter, maybe pushing out new growth in the spring, cutting some of that stuff back, you know, in it's kind of early stages of growth. So I did that one year with my Helianthus uh, Lemon Queen. It got to about a foot tall before I cut it back. I cut it back by half and it really helped reduce the height from the six to eight feet to about four feet. Um, I did it once with an Aster Purple Dome and it formed like this big ball of purple as opposed to, you know, kind of this tall lanky aster. So uh, just a little tip, we do that with some of the other plants here at Mill Creek. I can specifically think of Pulmonium uh, Bressingham purple, beautiful plant, smells great, but kind of gets a little bit tall. So what we do in the spring is kind of cut that thing back when it gets to about, you know, six, eight inches, cut it back by half and it really helps kind of keep things a little bit stocky. Uh, but yeah, back to the Lemon Queen. I could talk all day about plants, so it's going to be really hard to keep this uh, under an hour. Sorry. Um, let's see. So Midwest native, uh, so you know it's going to be, you know, tough as nails and then also a great plant for uh, attracting pollinators. Okay, Heucarella, oh, excuse me, Heucra Red Lightning. Uh, this is from Terranova. Terranova kind of really wrote the book uh, on Heuchera over the years. I mean, they've made some really incredible strides over the last 15 years in some of the introductions that they've met or that they've uh, put out. Uh, 
you know, excited to see what this guy does, this red lightning. Typically, you know, you see this red veination on here. Um, I mean, we've had plants like that in the past. You know, you can think of like Delta Dawn specifically would be one of them where you do get that red veination, but then as the summertime comes and the warm temperatures come, it kind of loses some of that. Uh, Terra Nova is kind of touting this as holding that color throughout the spring. Like I said, we usually just see that kind of when we get the cool, cool nights of early spring and maybe in the fall temps. Um, but this one's got some Velosa parentage to it. So um, we're excited to, again, add this to the lineup. You know, those Velosa ones uh, that we've added tend to hold up really well during the summer months. Uh, they can kind of take some of that heat uh, and maybe, you know, don't crash like some other uh, Heucheras have in the past. So I'm um, excited to see if this one certainly holds true with this red color uh, throughout the summer. All right, Agastache. Uh, Crazy Fortune. Um, this was one of the, oh, excuse me, Blue Fortune was one of the plants that I had listed uh, as one of my favorite plants. Um, great summer bloomer, super reliable, uh, comes back year after year, uh, incredible for pollinators, um, you know, just an all around really solid perennial. So this guy kind of fits the mold as well. Only difference is it's kind of got this, you can see this variegation. Uh, to it. So, you know, again, it's got that same bottle breath or bottle brush flower. Uh, so we're going to be introducing this into our two gallon lineup here at Mill Creek. I think this one probably gets a little bit shorter than, you know, than the Blue Fortune at the, you know, the 28 to 32 inches for Crazy Blue. But again, if you're looking for plants to promote to your customers, just really great pollinators, I would put this in, in top three for sure. Agastache does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. All right. Hibiscus, French vanilla. Okay, so um, I'd say probably about three years ago, we introduced a three gallon perennial, uh, or excuse me, a three gallon hibiscus uh, to our lineup. Uh, Proven Winners does a phenomenal job. Uh, if you've ever been up there and seen some of their test plots, they put a lot of time and a lot of effort into researching and developing new varieties. And they've done a, a really great job with their hibiscus specifically. Uh, this French vanilla that we've picked up got these you know, really huge uh, dinner plate size blooms on here, seven to eight uh, inches wide. Uh, always been a fan of kind of yellow flowers, kind of got that warm summer happy feel to it. So uh, we picked up this, you know, this one here, it's got a creamy yellow, fades to white as the summertime comes, but, you know, it's got a really great, uh, you know, nice dark green foliage against it. You see some of them kind of have like a sharp, or excuse me, like a maroonish or almost a very dark blackish type foliage. But these got, these have a really nice green uh, to them. Uh, like I said, it gets to about four feet tall. So kind of a sizable plant, um, you know, as we've got new, um, you know, we've got new younger folks entering the, the marketplace and buying some plants and maybe first time gardeners. I don't know how you walk by a hibiscus, uh, in a garden center and not want to pick that up when you see the size of some of these blooms are really phenomenal. Um, and then just want to go over a real quick note here uh, on the bottom, uh, available early June. Uh, we get a lot of questions from our customers. Well, how come I can't get hibiscus early? Can we get them in May? Um, unfortunately, um, we're kind of at the mercy of our suppliers. They're generally not shipping out um, their hibiscus to us until I would say early April. So we generally get them in as soon as we can and grow them and, you know, try to get as uh, a quality of plant as we can and get it to you as soon as possible. But I would say generally, you know, early June um, is probably when you're going to start seeing um, the French vanilla along with other hibiscus hitting our availability. All right, uh, Drops of Jupiter. Uh, this is ornamental oregano. I was kind of back and forth on this one, how I felt about it, but after staring at this picture a little bit longer, uh, I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, all the years that I've been here at Mill Creek, I don't think I've seen anything uh, that's quite as unique as this with that chartreuse color, and I just love the, uh, the purple blooms on this guy. So this is an ornamental uh, oregano. Um, you know, I guess you could eat it if you wanted to, but we're going to be treating it as a perennial here at Mill Creek. I doubt that it's got the, the same flavor as, you know, some of the 
uh, oregano's that we offer in our herb line. Um, but you know, the showstopper effect on this guy is just, you know, like I said, the, the, the purple blooms or excuse me, the pink blooms on this guy and then the purple calyx uh, that this has as well. So um, probably one of the top five plants that I'm really excited to get in my yard uh, here this fall and just to, you know, see what it does. You know, I love plants with multi-season interest and this certainly has it with the foliage color, then you get the blooms and you get the calyx on it. So uh, really excited uh, for this new introduction that we got from Proven Winters. Proven Winners, excuse me. All right, Perovskia, Sage Advice. Uh, a lot of Perovskia have been hitting the market here in the last couple of years. Uh, this one here, Sage Advice, is again a, a proven winner. Uh, Walters Gardens is kind of promoting this as having, you know, a, a much darker purple flowers than, you know, other Perovskias out there on the market. Um, again, you know, we're seeing a lot of plants kind of being bred to be short and stocky. This guy is not that. He is not tiny at all. This is a solid, you know, three to, you know, three and a half, excuse me, two and a half to three feet. Um, you know, they are promoting this as not being floppy. So, um, you know, the Perovsky atroplis is that you see kind of, uh, this is one of the downsides of not meeting a person you can't see on my hand motions, but, uh, you know, you see some of these Perovskias and they're kind of flopping open, kind of like, you know, maybe some of the old school uh, Nepetas, you know, a lot of these new plants are being bred to kind of stay a little bit more stout, a little bit more uh, sturdy, you know, handle the wind a little bit better. So uh, looking forward to, you know, seeing this guy in action. And then, you know, another great, you know, attribute about the uh, Perovskia as well is, I mean, they do phenomenal throughout the summer months. They tolerate the, the heat, the dry, the long summer days, um, and then also, you know, extremely hardy as well. All right, Salvia, back to the fuchsia. Uh, I don't know what they're doing in Michigan, but man, they're coming up with some pretty unique names uh, for some of these plants here. But this is a new one that we've added to our Color Spire series, kind of along with our Crystal Blue, the Pink Dawn, the Violet Riot. Uh, I love Salvia as a grower. It's a phenomenal plant. Um, you know, you can whack the crap out of it after it's done blooming and it flushes out. And, you know, three, four, five weeks later, you know, we can put it on our availability again. Uh, and sell it. Um, just really great garden performance. Um, like I said, big fan. I've got, you know, multiple salvias. Actually, I've got some of the crystal blue at home. Uh, this pink color is just really phenomenal. It's going to be a darker pink than the pink dawn that we already offer uh, in this lineup. Uh, great early season color, you know, grows to about two feet, long bloom time. Um, you know, like I said, salvia, it's, it seems like the salvias have kind of had a downward slide uh, the last couple years, uh, but I'm really hoping, you know, this new one here adds to kind of some resurgence to the salvia uh, lineup because, I mean, like, like I said, I think they're phenomenal plants. They're great garden performers, and for, especially for a first-time gardener, if they're looking for a perennial that, you know, is going to come back year after year, this is a, a good option. Oh, here's another great option. Okay, if uh, again, if you've ever heard me speak uh, at any of the past events that we've had here, I, I can't not talk about Baptisia. I love Baptisia, just a solid uh, native uh, as well. Uh, these plants are tough as nails, uh, great perennial. Um, you know, again, I was talking about how much I love yellow flowers. Well, here's another example of one that we've added to our lineup uh, that's uh, a beautiful yellow. You know, gets weeks of beautiful, beautiful color. Um, just a really solid plant. Again, you know, once you get something like this established in the ground, I mean, you can have this for years and years and years, you know. Uh, and even after just a couple seasons in the ground, you know, you can have 10, 15, you know, 20 eyes coming out of the ground and these things just get bigger and bigger and bigger every year as far as, you know, how wide and, you know, much they'll, they'll expand. And usually, you know, pretty steady at a good three to four feet tall. Um, but, you know, one of the really cool things about this, like, again, you know, I said the multi-season interest, uh, you know, I can't just have one trick ponies uh, at home. So, you know, the seed heads on these guys are really neat because they kind of form like the, where it's kind of like an egg shape little um, seed head and then it kind of cracks open it's got all the little seeds inside and when it blows in the wind in the fall it kind of sounds like a little rattle so uh, kind of cool little plant but yeah really excited for uh, this American goldfinch here. 
Okay, all right, we just got a little bit of shrub action here. So this is lilac scent and scentability. Uh, so here we go again, more plants kind of being bred to be short. So, you know, uh, this isn't the lilac that you're gonna see at grandma's house that's, you know, 10 feet tall and hiding the propane tank on the side of the house. Uh, these guys are only two to three feet tall. This one actually is wider than it is tall. So again, if you got a first time gardener, maybe they don't want something real big or they don't have a whole lot of space uh, and they're looking for, you know, a good shrub. This is a really great option for some early season color. Then you get that sweet, you know, kind of classic lilac smell. Um, but again, you know, really, really good plant. Uh, these things bloom like crazy. We have really good success selling these. So we're excited to offer this for 2021. Okay, eucalyptus. Um, all right, so we're hoping that this is gonna be a new introduction, this baby blue for 2021. Um, we've gotten some feedback from some of our suppliers about seed shortages with uh, eucalyptus and eucalyptus seed. Uh, apparently wildfires in Australia where a lot of the seed is being harvested are causing some shortages of eucalyptus seed. So if anybody has any issues or struggles trying to get eucalyptus on their order this year, this is why, I mean, this is, you know, it happens every year when we're dealing with live product, there's always something that, you know, there's uh, an issue with or a problem. And uh, so, you know, our hope was adding this additional variety, baby blue, we could kind of fill in some holes, but we're already kind of finding uh, some issues obtaining seed for this. So if we don't have it, uh, for 2021, we're certainly gonna be looking to add this uh, baby blue to our herb lineup for 2022. Okay, Ipomia, uh, another Medusa coming back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really amazing over the years just seeing how plants and in, in the breeding has, has just transitioned. And, you know, with the Ipomia has come a long ways from kind of just that classic green and then the blacky and the tricolor. And now there's so many, you know, different shades and different shapes. Um, you know, we grow these three here on the right and they've got some different, you know, very unique shapes to them. But then we added this Medusa here as well. So, you know, something new, something different, you know, uh, maybe not for everybody, but we're excited to uh, offer it. Uh, it's just another, you know, Ipomia that, you know, again, just, you know, something pretty unique. Okay, these headliners, man. Let me tell you what, we, we can't have enough of uh, these guys. So these are two new introductions to the headliner uh, series. Ball Seed has done a phenomenal job with these guys. You know, maybe not for the old school gardener that likes some of the tr more traditional stuff, but again, uh, I don't know how a new, uh, you know, gardener or somebody just getting into, you know, planting containers or something walks by something like this at a garden center and doesn't just say, you know, wow. So we've got crystal blue here on the left and then electric purple sky here on the right. Um, so again, these kind of go with some of the other headliners that we're doing right now. Um, so these will be available, uh, probably hitting our availability, I would say about week 18. Uh, so keep an eye out for these guys, we're pretty excited. Okay, and then this next one here is uh, Enchanted Sky. So we are fortunate to have uh, one of our suppliers touch base with us and say, hey, you know, we've got this new introduction uh, this new headliner called Enchanted Sky. It's become available for 2022, but we're going to do a small pre-release for 2021. Uh, and asked if we were interested. We said, yeah, let's do it. So we've got a small batch of these. They're going to become available uh, in, uh, let's see, early, oh, excuse me, about mid-May. I would say probably about week 18 as well. Unfortunately, we're not letting people pre-book these. Uh, I don't think it's really a secret that we have these out, but if anybody asks, uh, tell them Doug Heindel told you about these. Thanks, Doug. Take one for the team. Oh man. Okay, uh, Supertunia Mini Vista. Okay, uh, Supertunias are some hardworking uh, uh, annuals. Uh, this Mini Vista here is the annual of the year. So excited to add that. You know, Proven Winners does a phenomenal job uh, with their lineup. So for us, this was a no brainer as far as adding this for 2021. Uh, like I said, the the mini vis or excuse me, the Vista Supertunias are hardworking plants, extremely vigorous, continuous blooms, self-cleaning, so you don't have to go through and pick off spent blooms. 
variety of colors, just super low maintenance, uh, you know, really tough plant. So again, here we go. Um, Mini Vista, tighter, smaller, a little bit more compact. So like I said, Proven Wonders does a phenomenal job as far as introducing new plant materials. So, uh, you know, again, this was a no brainer adding this to the 2021 lineup. Okay. All right. Uh, how'd I do on time, Doug? Looking good. I'm Looking shocked, good. to be honest, that that was only okay. 20 minutes. <laughs> All yeah, right. Doing great. Okay, so Doug's got a second poll question here, folks. So okay, take here we go. It. What is your favorite fall annual? Fred, do you have one option of there that you would like to select? Yeah. You select all buttons. Um, you know, I, I said I like planting in the fall. I'm going to go with this sunflower. We're going to kind of talk a little bit about this here in a bit, but we're doing this one called Sensation Sunflower. I'm really excited for uh, for this year. Nice. All right, let's uh, end the poll. Oh, yeah, look at that. Share results. Pansies. Oh, that's good, too. All right, pansies, yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. All right. Here Back we go. To Fred with uh, Summer and Beyond. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so last year, man, who who knew that uh, there were going to be, you know, record-breaking years and the demand for plant material the way it was? I mean, there was a point where we weren't even sure if we were going to be open or maybe if we were open, if you guys as customers were going to be open. So a lot of uncertainty last year, but... Um, you know, we'll, we'll take the wins where we can get them. Um, and, you know, we saw a lot of really positive things and a lot of demand for plant material last June. And unfortunately, uh, we weren't ready for it. Uh, so we took steps this year to make sure that that would not happen uh, again. Felt like we took a loss a little bit in the month of June last year, just because the, we sold so many plants throughout the spring months in March and April and May, that our availability was just very, very, very thin going into the months of June and kind of really beyond. Uh, so um, when we went through and did our production planning, we made a very conscious effort to make sure that that was not going to happen uh, to us uh, this spring. So uh, we put forth a plan to make sure that we've got large amounts of fresh plant material, not kind of just leftovers from spring, but fresh plant material finishing uh, through the month of June. June is still a phenomenal time uh, to do planting as well. Um, but make sure we've got fresh plant material hitting our availability uh, through the month of June and beyond. So we're gonna kind of get into some of the, the details on that. Okay, first thing, uh, summer color. So perennials, that's our jam here at Mill Creek. Uh, so uh, what we did was we took a look at our lineup and we have added about 200 plus fresh crops of material and rotations finishing during the month of June alone. So probably about 150 different plants uh, will be hitting our availability during the several weeks uh, throughout the month of June. So when we were looking at the lineup, we wanted to focus on, you know, obviously stuff, you know, that's, you know, going to give us guaranteed summer color. Uh, that's what sells for you. That's what sells well for us. Uh, so we made a big focus on summer color. Um, we looked at top performers, plants that we know are guaranteed to do well, hold up well, um, you know, most popular items. So we added some of those. You can see geranium, you know, Roseanne right here, uh, you know, probably one of our top selling plants. So we'll make sure we'll have ample supply of that uh, available throughout, you know, the month of June and beyond. And then pollinators, that still is very much uh, a, a hot item and people are looking for plants to attract, you know, whether it is pollinators or, you know, I, I really love planting things that are attracting birds. We've got this beautiful calicarpa uh, that's been blooming uh, outside my kitchen window and, and the, the cardinals have just been coming out and the contrast of the beautiful red birds on the, uh, the white snow uh, is it's beautiful, but I'm getting off topic. Um, so pollinators. Um, so again, you know, we're going to offering, you know, a ton of Budlia, you know, great pollinator plants, you know, Asclepius, another one that we just can't seem to have enough of here at Mill Creek. And then, uh, you know, foliage color as well. I mean, the demand for Heuchera last year was like none other. Um, so we've got 20 different varieties of Heuchera finishing uh, throughout the month of June. And then, you know, the last couple seasons, we've made a push on making sure that we've got Echinacea available 
uh, through the June months as well. So we really just expanded upon that too. So we'll have 25 to 30 varieties of Echinacea uh, finishing during the month of June. So really excited about, you know, uh, having fresh material, you know, hitting our availability. And one thing that we're going to be doing as well uh, is probably about mid-May sending out um, kind of a version of like a supplement that we send out a couple times a year. We're going to be sending one of those out, uh, about, like I said, about mid-May, kind of just giving you a heads up of what kind of things you can keep an eye out for our availability that we're going to be having. So whether it's perennials, whether it's annuals, uh, or herbs as well, you know, what kind of fresh stock you can expect to see coming on our availability in the coming months. Okay, herbs as well. Okay, so fresh herbs going into the month of June. So um, our herb program uh, did a phenomenal job last year. Again, the demand was very, very high. Uh, you know, but then as we trickle into the June months, like we did last year, um, you know, our availability was very thin. We just sold so much plant material through the month of June that we just did not have much left over. And typically, um, you know, historically at Milk Creek, um, you know, we, we haven't had a whole lot of fresh, you know, material finishing the month of June. So we wanted to kind of really make a transition away from that and making sure that we did have fresh stock available uh, this year for 2021. So uh, we've got new rotations finishing throughout the month of June of our top sellers, most popular herbs. Um, you know, the month of June, we're probably going to have close to 50,000 three-inch pots uh, finishing. So I know Doug's very happy um, about that. Yep, there we go. Me too, Doug. Um, so yeah, lots of fresh herbs finishing. Again, like I said, top seller. So parsleys and cilantros and, and basil, of course, and, um, you know, oreganos and mints. So everything, you know, people, people are uh, asking for. And then out of that 50,000 plants that we're going to be offering, I would say about half of that um, is going to be basil. Uh, we've heard from many customers over the years that, you know, when they're putting in herb orders, the first thing they're looking for is kind of that foundation piece of their order is basil. So we're going to make sure uh, that we're going to have plenty, you know, of fresh basil coming. So like I said, about 25,000 basil finishing uh, during the month of June as well. So uh, you can feel confident knowing that if you're looking for, you know, um, some uh, fresh basil or any other of the more popular herbs that uh, we'll be able to fill that need for you here at Milk Creek. Okay, here we go. Breaking news, everybody. If Doug hasn't spilled the beans to anybody about this already in his customer visits, uh, we're going to be introducing uh, a six-inch line of herbs uh, starting this June uh, as well um, here at Mill Creek. Really excited about it. So these are going to be uh, like I said, six inch pots, six pots to a tray. This is the same tray and pot that we use for our annual line. Um, just wanted to be able to offer you all, uh, you know, bigger plant material, you know, maybe as the summer months are coming, it's a little bit easier to maintain and, and I have to water as frequently, you know, a, a six inch pot versus a three inch pot. Uh, so again, we've hand selected about a dozen varieties that we're going to be offering um, in this six inch line as well and have those available uh, during the month of June. And the hope is that, you know, in, in coming seasons to have, you know, some of these I guess, culinary basics, uh, you know, the bread and butter type items available, you know, throughout, you know, the entire growing season, not just the, the spring. Because, you know, I mean, people love to, you know, use fresh herbs all season long, you know, not just during the spring. So really excited about the potential for this program. Um, and then these will also have, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the custom tag that you're, uh, you know, used to seeing in our, our, uh, our plants as well. So keep an eye out for that. And again, we'll kind of have these included in that little flyer that we're going to be sending out that little supplement um, in mid-May. So you'll be able to see the lineup of, you know, what items that we'll be offering uh, in that as well in this product line. Okay, more color. Okay, so annuals. Let me move my camera here. Annuals. Um, so to keep the theme going of color for June, we've extended that not only to our perennial lineup, but also to our annual lineup as well. So um, again, we've historically been kind of thin going into the month of June. Um, we don't want to be that way uh, anymore. So again, we're kind of making a focus 
uh, having some of the staples, uh, but then also some of the items that just perform better kind of once the sun kind of finally comes out on a regular basis. Not all annuals perform so well when they're potted in March when we do a lot of our annual plantings like a lantana or a pentis, uh, calaranthus, something like that. So some of those items just perform better once the sun finally comes. So we're kind of shifting some of our production to being a little bit later with some of those key varieties having those available for the months of June, but then also some of the bread and butter. So you can see the Vista bubble gum down here on the right. Um, you know, the, the salvia, uh, the rock and fuchsia, that's, you know, probably one of the nicer, cooler introductions over the last couple of years to our annual lineup. I mean, that thing is phenomenal. Um, and then also making a big push uh, for some of the landscape uh, basics as well, as far as, I shouldn't say basic, but landscape performers that do very well, I'm specifically thinking sun patients. If you haven't gotten on the sun patient train yet, you need to do it because they're phenomenal plants. They're great uh, in the ground as, uh, you know, I've, I've just seen some beautiful mass plantings of sun patients. Uh, our landscape customers uh, that we work with here at Mill Creek have just been eating them up in the last couple of years. And it seems like every season, we're, you know, increasing our lineup, whether it's the selection or the, the quantity that we're offering, it just continues to grow and grow every year just because the performance of the plants have been so phenomenal. Um, so we'll be, you know, and then also making a focus on some six inch material as well. So again, kind of offering something a little bit larger, um, you know, if you need some instant color to for your containers, you know, maybe you got a graduation party coming and you just haven't gotten around to potting anything up, you know, some of the six inch material may help your customers be able to kind of fill a need for some instant color. Um, so yes, yeah, so again, uh, the trend continues, fresh stock hitting our availability, uh, you know, during the months of June and beyond. Okay, so we're gonna kind of transition to fall a little bit here. Uh, it's hard to believe, but you know, uh, as cold as it is outside, uh, spring usually goes by in a blur and before you know it, it's football season and fall is here. Um, I personally love planting in the fall. Um, I love plants. I'm incredibly passionate about plants, but you know, after a, a long spring, um, you know, getting a shovel in the ground is kind of, you know, medium priority, I would say. But by the time fall rolls around and we've got a lot of our new crops finishing here at Mill Creek, that's usually when I like to go through and hand select some varieties, kind of like the oregano or some of our new shrubs to uh, to get in the ground. So fall is a phenomenal time for planting, um, you know, a little bit cooler, you know, uh, just like I said, great time for planting, a little bit less stressful on the plants. You don't have to worry about watering as much. Um, so what we're trying to do here uh, at Mill Creek here this year is to kind of have a fresh selection of fall crops, specifically crops that are blooming, showing color, maybe it's foliage color, maybe it's a flower color, um, you know, kind of in this fall window uh, that hopefully you guys can promote to your customers and clientele as well. So we're gonna be offering about 25 to 30 different of our best-selling perennials. So again, we got anemones, asters, you know, Allium, Heucheras, Rebecchias. So again, just some of those top items that, you know, kind of are some of those late season bloomers um, to really just kind of make a big push, you know, during that fall time season. All right, I'm guessing uh, Douglas has probably spilled the beans on this one as well to a few of you, uh, but we're going to be offering fall annuals as well this year. This is probably one of the things I'm most excited about uh, as well, uh, but this will be the first time that Mill Creek has offered a fall lineup. Uh, we're going to be offering plant material anywhere ranging from a three and a half, four and a half, six inch pot to uh, 12 inch decorative planters too. Um, so again, when, when we send out our flyer, I would say probably, I don't know, maybe early August, kind of that supplement for all of our fall crops, uh, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what some of the things are that we're going to be offering, but we've kind of got a little sneak peek on here, but we know we're looking to grow some asters, celosias, hypomias, uh, the helianthus, the sunflower that you see on here, that's that sensation sunflower that I was talking about earlier, we're, you know, hoping to uh, be able to do those in some monoculture pots, uh, marigolds, pansies, peppers. Um, I'm super, super excited for this new introduction to, uh, to Mill Creek as well. So hopefully, you know, as we're supplying you all with uh, outstanding plants, 
uh, during the fall months, um, you know, our hope is that we can offer you all some, some uh, you know, one-stop shopping and be able to supply you all with um, some beautiful fall annuals as well. Oh, how, how am I doing, Doug? Oh, wow. Done already. That was right on time. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right, folks, we've got our third poll question. All right, what do you got there, Douglas? That is a great question. <laughs> All right, here we go. Third poll question. Have you submitted your spring order to Mill Creek yet? Ooh. What do you think, Fred? Is there any advantages to pre-booking with Mill Creek? Oh, well, you know, uh, for sure. You know, I would say, you know, the uh, the... There seems to be some uncertainty, you know, going into, you know, what is this spring going to be like uh, from a lot of the folks that we're talking to, whether it's vendors, colleagues, competitors in the industry. I think everybody's feeling like uh, 2021 is going to be just as strong as 2020 was. Uh, so that's a good feeling for us. Uh, we feel really uh, well prepared for that. Uh, I guess one of the advantages of pre-booking plant material is that, you know, you might be able to sleep a little bit better knowing that you've got your basil committed and on order for, you know, week 18. So, Doug, do you have any, any additional feedback to that? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it uh, gives pe people a peace of mind definitely to have some stuff on order, but we'll have plenty available on availability as well. I mean, should be great. Looks like we're about 50-50 on Ooh. orders. Looks like you got some work to do, Doug. Yep. It's all right. We've got time. Quick okay. reminder, uh, pre-books are due next Friday, February 26th. Um, after that week, that next Thursday, the first Thursday in March, will be our first a weekly availability will go out. And then uh, after that point, you can just order off availability. As you can see from the slide here, just a reminder that we are here for you. Definitely feel free to reach out via phone or email anytime. We're here to help if you have any questions or just need to chat, need a, some therapy session. It's good for both of us. It's fine, you know. We love talking plants. Good. What's that? You said we love talking plants. Yeah, all day. It's great. All day. So yeah, pre-book order deadline is next Friday, the 26th. Also next Friday, the 26th is our POP signed order deadline. Um, so these POP signs are great. Uh, Fred always calls them hidden salesmen or secret salesmen or silent salesmen. Silence, see, silent salesmen. So we have 12 different signs and there's two different sizes. There's like a eight and a half by 11 size and then a larger size to hang up in your garden centers. So yeah, next Friday is the due date for those. So now we will head to the Q&A. We've got some Q&A from, uh, from our registrations. I'll hit Fred with them and he'll... Uh, Let's see if I can stump Fred. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. When are your herbs going to be ready? Oh, good question, Doug. Um, well, uh, most of the herbs, I would say, well, let me, let me go backwards. I would say early April, you'll start to see the first of our herbs hitting availability. That's generally kind of some of our cool season stuff, like, you know, parsley's and some of our greens. I would say as the weeks progress, our availability and lineup and selection of herbs opens up. So by mid-April, I would say probably about half of our herb selection and lineup becomes available. And by the end of April, it, it should all pretty much be there at that point. Um, I would say last week of April, the first week of May is when uh, basil really starts to you know, uh, show its head on availability in pretty strong numbers. Um, so anywhere from early April and for sure by the end of the month of April, um, the full game is pretty much on there. Okay, great. Yeah, we get that question a lot when I'm out on the road. So yeah, April. Great. Uh, next question. This is my first time buying. What advice would you give a first time buyer? Ooh, sounds like a good one for you, Doug. Oh, I'll take this. So this is another question we get a lot when I'm on the road meeting with new customers. One thing I always like to show customers is I get our catalog right here. We flip to page uh, 17 and 18 in our catalog. We have a list of our best sellers. Um, we do a good majority of our business in the spring, uh, like 100 days here in the spring. So that's what our customers are bringing in at that time of the year. 
So that's kind of what's popular. I mean, Fred and I always talk, stick to the basics. These are kind of the basics. These are the basically proven winners, but not proven winners. But those are what people are buying. That's what sells. So that's a, a great place to start is our best sellers list. So yeah, thanks for kicking that to me, Fred. Appreciate that. All right, next question. How do you think the spring will go in 2021 in comparison to 2020? Hmm. Well, um, you know, I would say I, I certainly feel more prepared uh, this year. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, there was a time where we weren't even sure if we were going to be open and, or, you know, how many people do we hire? And, uh, but I think as dust is kind of settled here, um, you know, it, it feels like it's going to be a really, really strong spring. And, you know, even last year, as, as poor as the weather was, I mean, I feel like it, we had frost after, I think it was May 17th, we had a frost here last year. So really, the, the weather wasn't even that great last spring. So that's that's always, you know, a big unknown. Um, but no, like, like a, again, I had mentioned earlier, you know, competitors, we've talked to vendors that were buying plant material from, uh, just colleagues that we have throughout the industry, everybody is feeling really, really strong about uh, this coming season. You know, one thing I can say that uh, I guess some hard numbers that we've been able to take a look at is that we've had a, a really big increase in the amount of people pre-booking orders with us, uh, both dollars of plants that have been pre-booked, and then we've got customers who don't normally pre-book plant material with us who are pre-booking uh, now as well. So it seems like everybody's very antsy, uh, and but at the same time being, feeling uh, very positive uh, for, for 2021. 20, yes, 2021. 2020 was our best sales year ever here at Mill Creek by far, and uh, we feel like we're in a really good position to topple that number here in 2021. Absolutely. All right. Next question. Please address how inventory will look compared to 2020. And along with that, remind me when the availability broadcast comes out, which I've kind of already touched down. So if you want to, if you want to touch on how inventory will look compared to 2020. Yeah. Great question. Okay. So, um, I hate using the word uncertainty of what last year was, but I mean, you know, again, there, there was, I mean, and, and uh, we had canceled some orders on some plant material, you know, we didn't want to get stuck holding on to stuff. I mean, hindsight being 2020, we probably should have ordered more plant material, but uh, I think a lot of people were in that same boat. Um, but again, after we saw just, you know, the incredible demand that there was, and then the demand that just kind of kept going throughout the summer, uh, we put forth a plan here at Mill Creek to make sure that we had uh, basically as much plant material as we could. I mean, here in the spring months, um, you know, at times we're kind of limited by the amount of space that we have. Uh, anybody you talk to probably tells you that they just don't have enough space. We're, we're kind of the same. I've only actually know one guy in this entire industry that says he's has more space than he knows what to do with. Um, but, uh, but no, we, we've got kind of limited amounts of space, so we can only push so much stuff out the door during, you know, that March, April, May timeframe. Um, but that's why we've made this conscious effort to really make a big focus on the months of June and then throughout the summer and then really kind of hit that window um, in late August, uh, September. I mean, last September was just, the weather was phenomenal. I mean, we missed a huge opportunity by not having, you know, some of these, you know, say annuals available last September. I mean, and, and even in October. So uh, we really feel like we've set ourselves up pretty well. Um, for you know, inventory purposes and having plant material here, uh, we've got the space you know kind of in the off season. You know, I would say during the you know like September timeframe, we've got the space here at that point. Um, so we're trying to maximize every square inch that we have here to make sure that we've got enough plants to uh, satisfy everybody's needs. Great. All right, we got some questions coming in here on the, the screen, so we'll see how this works. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. So there are some fastballs. Will you be offering way. any vegetables this season? Vegetables. Oh, good question. Yeah. So um, 
the short answer is no. Uh, we won't be offering any vegetables. Um, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, we are kind of tight on space. I mean, we keep, you know, every year we add more huts and additional space. Uh, but as of right now, vegetables are not in our lineup. And I know that's a, a, a been a, a, a tough get for some folks. Um, I think some local suppliers are no longer offering is maybe quite the selection that they used to. Um, so as of right now, uh, that is not in our plans for uh, 2021. So sorry. Okay. Melanie has asked, French tarragon, can you grow in a six inch pot for June and later? Also dill, customers need later to coincide with pickling. Dill. Okay, I love dill. Uh, I love dill pickles and I love the smell of dill and we grow lots of dill uh, at my house. So dill actually will be one of the plants that we will be offering in the six inch lineup. And French tarragon, that one might be a little bit tougher. The tarragon just kind of grows really slow. I would say at times we have struggles filling out a three inch pot, let alone a six inch pot. So I don't necessarily know that that's one that we will be offering in our six inch lineup, but I can confirm that we will be growing dill for sure in the six inch line. Perfect. Wes asks, how do you add any additional trucks to open up more room on weekly deliveries? Well, that sounds like a good question for you, Doug. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so yeah, we haven't added additional trucks per se. I, I guess the best thing I would say is get us your order and we'll figure out how to get it to you. I mean, we- Good answer. We come down to your area once a week, but there's opportunities there. We can come down there twice a week if you need it. So just get us your order as soon as you know, and then we'll work around getting it down to you in the time we need you, We need to have it down there, if that, if that helps. And if you have further questions, just contact me or Fred on the, off the webinar here. All right, next question. Is everything that is in your catalog on your website? It's probably also a Doug question. Unless Fred, you want to take it? Oh, well, uh, I'll just add one part. And then if, if you'd like to chime in, you can, we can tag team it. Um, is everything in our catalog on our website? That's no. Uh, the short answer on that one is also no. Uh, we've got so many plants every year that we're, I mean, just, I don't, maybe recycling is not the best word, but we you know we're phasing old things out and bringing new things in every year. Uh, and it is a very tall order to keep that um, as up to date as possible. I mean, that could probably be a full-time job for, for somebody just keeping our, our perennial, or excuse me, our entire plant lineup, uh, you know, up to date. As Doug had mentioned, we grow and sell over a million units a year. And, you know, I don't know how many new items we're offering this year. I mean, if I had to guess, I would guess it's probably around 150 possibly. Um, so that's a tough, tough one. Maybe Doug, do you want to explain to people why you haven't updated that yet? <laughs> What's that, the, the website? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress. We're getting there. Like Ted Fred said, things are constantly changing and we're getting there. We're picking away at it. We're growers. We're not uh, IT people, right? There you go. All right. Uh, what you got? Question about hellebores. We oh, love hellebores. As I'm sure Fred does as well, and yeah. yours in particular. But they need they tend to weaken as the season continues, i.e., leaf edges turning black, some rotting. Any suggestions to keep them looking great? Yes. Yeah, so that kind of sounds like too much water, uh, if if I had to guess. So I mean. Uh, hellebores don't really like the heat that much too. So the combination of uh, heat, especially if they've been sitting, you know, maybe on a bench for an extended period of time, maybe you didn't sell them in the spring. Um, yeah, that sounds like, you know, maybe some typical issues that we hear, we see here sometimes too. So I would say maybe ease up on the watering. You know, they're not growing a whole lot. They kind of almost go dormant during the summer months. So they don't really require a, a whole lot of water. So um, those would be my suggestions. Back off on the watering a little bit and try to almost set them aside somewhere where they're going to not get too much attention because I think people tend to just water at times for the heck of it. And, uh, you know, here at Mill Creek, like probably many other places, we probably kill more plants by giving them too much water than not enough. All right, I think we'll do one more question. 
just because we're getting close on time and I don't know how this thing is. Make it a good one, Doug. Yeah. Oh, this is great. It's from our buddy, Ron Wilson. In your oh, photo yeah. of Mill Creekies, great staff, by the way, is that really George in the photo or is that a cardboard cutout stand up? Wait, where's George? What photo? In the catalog. <laughs> yeah, that's George. Of course it's George. He's here all the time, but you know, when he's not. Yeah, except for today, right? Except for today. No, yeah, yeah that's George. George is here um, all the time. George is still uh, plays a very integral part of what we do here at Mill Creek. Uh, George is a great guy. We love having him around. Um, you know, he's always smiling and saying hi and you know, we're very thankful for, for him. And, and actually, we just built new offices. So we're thankful for that here at Mill Creek as well. So yes, that is George, even though he looks like a cutout. Um, but yes, hopefully that answers your question, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, George, he's a rock star. He is a rock star. Kind of he's a big a, deal. He is a big deal. Yes. All right, well, let's, uh, we've got one more thing to wrap up here. We've got to announce the winners of our Mill Creek Yetis. Let me uh, scan through my notes here. Okay. The suspense. Winner of the first Yeti is Linda Bierce with Marshall County Co-op. Oh yeah. Congratulations, Linda. Number two goes to Wes King at King's Gardens. Congrats. And then the third one will go to Annette Wright with Wright Gardens. Ooh. We will contact you all directly and set up, uh, we'll have them mailed down to you um, here in the near future. So we'll, we'll set that up off the, off the webinar. So thank everybody for uh, attending today. Hope, hopefully this is informative and a good time for everybody. It, it was our first go round with Zoom. So hopefully, hopefully our mics are on. They'd probably be kids important. have been teaching us how to do it. Yeah, this has been great. So we really appreciate it. We're really looking forward to this spring. So. Amen. Definitely reach out if you have any questions at all. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.